Hey guys, welcome to the 19th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. And in this one we're going to be taking a look at extending that user change form that we used in the last video to be able to edit the entire user model and make a custom form so that we can limit the information that's shown on the screen. So let's just go ahead and get straight into it. I need to do a few things. So if we look at the existing site, I've got my development server running. If we go to account forward slash uh, profile for slash edit, this is the page that we get. And we get a form which works when we could submit data if we if we change this, for example, we can, pray, we can say submit, and it's going to update that information. So this form is working, but it's very cluttered and we don't need to show the user everything like their last login and the date they joined necessarily, and we definitely don't want them to be able to edit that information. So all I'm gonna show is the first name, last name, and email and that's all they're going to be able to change so their username isn't even going to be able to be changed and none of this other information either except maybe also this password so uh, the password isn't going to work by the end of this video because we have to write a custom form and do some password stuff to deal with uh, this this password thing to make sure that it's secure when they're changing their password and not susceptible to ha hackers and things like that to change uh, user passwords unnecessarily but for now, we're just going to stick to the first name, last name, and email address. And we'll also have a link to this form, but we're not actually going to make that form work in this video. So, let's go and go to this URL, and uh, so that URL is configured to go to the uh, view called Edit Profile. So if you go to the URLs, you can see Profile forward slash Edit, which is the one we're at now, is views.editprofile. So, let's go to the Edit Profile. And what I'm going to do here is I'm essentially going to use this same view, but instead of directly using that user change form, just like we did with the registration form, we're going to change it and write our own custom form. So we go to the forms.py, just like here we use the user creation form which we inherited from to get all the, all the necessary information, all the attributes and uh, methods on that class. We inherit all that into our registration form and then we just write our own custom code which is a very small amount of code thanks to that inheritance. So we're going to do the same thing as well with the user change form. So I need to import that before we can in inherit from it. We're also going to be using the user model so if you haven't written this form already then you'll also need to import that and of course import forms uh, from Django import forms. So now that we've got those imported, I'm going to say class, and this is going to be uh, edit profile. Uh, well, it's the edit profile page. So I'm going to say edit profile form, and it's going to inherit from that user change form. So now that we've got that, it's actually going to be a very simple form because everything is already written for us. We've already got the bare bones of that form and it works, it's editable, so we don't really need to do much. We don't have to tell it what form, you know, what we need to display in the form because it already knows. All we want to do is exclude certain elements of that form. And there's two ways that we can go about this. So there's two things called fields and exclude and we can write either of them to be able to specify the forms that we want to include in the form based on the fields that are in the model itself that we're using to create that form. So let's go and create that meta class. So it's a class meta. So remember it's just specifying the metadata for the form itself. That's all it means. So I'm going to say the model that we're using to submit data to the form and do all that stuff is going to be the user model. It's the model all this stuff is based off. and then I'm going to say, as I said, there's two things. So you could say either fields is equal to a list of fields that we want to include, or exclude, just like that, is going to be equal to a list of fields that we don't want to exclude. So if you've got a model and you say, you know, maybe you have 50 fields in that model, you don't really want to list out all 49 fields in this fields tuple. I mean, you could, it would work, but it would be a bit sort of unnecessary because what you could in instead do is exclude the one field that you don't want. But in this case, because we're going to exclude the majority of the fields that are in this model, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use exclude, I'm just going to use fields. So I'm just going to specify the fields that I want. 
So I'm just going to say I want the email field and I want the first name field and I want the last name. So now that we've done that, we should be able to use that form. That's all we've got to do. We don't have to do any of this uh, other information necessarily. Uh, we may have to do something with the save method, but you know we can we can see if we need that when it comes to testing it. Uh, and then all I'm going to do in the in the views itself, because we've already set up the templates, uh, the edit profile already is displaying uh, this uh, form, so we don't need to do anything there. In the views, all I need to do is change it to the form that I'm using. So we import from accounts.forms, which is where my forms.py is that defines the edit profile form. So in the views, I need to import that before I can use it. So along with the registration form, which I've already made in a previous video, I'm going to say edit profile form. So that's going to give us access to be able to use that form in this view views.py file. So all I'm going to do now is leave everything the same except I'm going to change the form that I'm using. So I'm going to change that to edit profile form. And remember, we can leave everything the same because it's inheriting from that user change form. We don't have to do anything differently. We, we can still leave this, this all as it is and it should just work because of everything that we're inheriting. So I'm going to say edit profile form on this one. Make sure you change it everywhere. I've often forgotten to do that and it hasn't worked. I'd wo I've wondered why. Um, and now I'm just going to refresh. And so I need to wait for this development server to refresh first. And now I'm going to refresh again. And now we get exactly what we wanted. So we've got the email address, first name and last name. And it populates with the data from the, if we go to the forms.py, you can see we specified model equals user. So because it's using that user model, it also assumes that you want to populate the fields with the data that's already in there. So it's really good because if, if I want to check if my first name is correct, I mean, I could go to the profile page just like this and see, oh, my name is Max, it's spelled correctly, that's great. But I also could change data. So let's see if it actually changes data. So I'm going to say max at email.com. It's not my real, real email, but just for demonstration purposes. It doesn't work because it says as a key error, password. So the reason for this error is because it it wants me to include the password. So I have to say password because remember we're also including the password. Now the password is a little bit different because of the way it hashes it and it doesn't store raw passwords and things like that. But we can still include it like this. So if we include it like that and wait for that development server to refresh, I can refresh this page and I'm going to confirm that I want to submit that form again. Now, what this means is it's going to send that data to the web server again. So if you're handling something like, for example, payment information, and by submitting the data again, you might accidentally pay for something twice, then that would be a very bad thing. But in this case, we know that it's fine because it's just our name or our email or something. So I'm going to submit that, and now you can see it works because there's no issue with that password being on that page. So it's got it's changed my email and it's updated and redirected us to the account forward slash profile page, which you can see in our views we've specified as the redirect for that form. So I'm just going to go back to the edit page and if you look here, we've got all the forms that we wanted, but this password is stored nice and securely. But if we click on the link to this form, it's broken. So that's what we're going to look at fixing in the next video, is creating that form so the password can be reset by the user without using the Django admin, which is how they have to do it at the moment. And since we don't really want the end users to have access to that, we just want them to be able to reset their password, maybe if we send them an email or something like that, uh, without going through the Django admin.